today's video is going to be a two-parter, I think. Um, possibly three parts, but definitely at least two. This is the very large backyard patio project. Uh, you can see by the title, we've been calling it the pool house. And I'll explain why we've chosen that name at the end. Um, so I wanted to do, <laughs> I've been sort of putting off doing this introduction uh, because the summer melts my brains and I haven't had enough focus to be able to properly explain uh, what we're going to do, <laughs> what you're going to see today. So in the video, um, the, the further into the project we got, the more exhausted I got and the less I was able to actually explain what we were doing. So it gets really, really, I think, hilariously confusing um, towards the middle of it. Uh, so yeah. So I'm going to um, insert here a diagram of the thing we're building in the backyard. We wanted to have a space where we could relax and cook outside over a fire if we wanted to, a place where we could have our hammock and our hammock chairs and a picnic table and all of those things rather than just having them in the yard. Willy-nilly, we wanted a, a space that sort of evoked a kind of outdoor living area and rather than just some grass with a picnic table in it. Um, and so if you if you follow uh, Kate at the last Homely House, uh, she has a whole bunch of different areas in her in her garden that she has um, that are like very specific outdoor spaces. Uh, she has different kinds of gardens. She's got her vegetable garden. She and she also has a spot that she calls the pavilion that is built on top of an old um, uh, at, on top of the site of an old greenhouse and so it's got these amazing um, timbers uh, they look like whole trees just sort of set up there we're not doing anything like that <laughs> we're, we're doing pressure treated lumber uh, from the hardware store so it doesn't it isn't going to have that beautiful place sort of feeling that her pavilion has, but I'm hoping that we're going to be able to use it in a similar way. A place for gathering, a place for doing outdoor crafts, a place just for sitting and thinking. Maybe I'll bring my spinning wheel out here occasionally. You know, just just an outdoor space. So that was a bit rambly, but I really wanted to give a little bit of background about why we're doing it um, before we get in. So here I'm going to insert a, uh, a drawing uh, and an ex ex explanation of what we're trying to build and then you can watch the video and see whether or not we have achieved that. <laughs> our vision for this project is to have uh, this square here is our 24 foot by 24 foot frame um, and then on the left and right sides uh, we want to have three posts set evenly um, and then uh, on top of the posts, we'll have two, oops, my pen, uh, two boards that are connected on this middle one here. Um, and then, so those will be on top of the posts um, and on each side. Okay, and those would be um, four by fours, uh, just like the posts are. Uh, so from these, hanging down we hope to have hammock chairs hanging plants assorted um things like that so this is our vision 24 foot frame six posts and then the two sides connected by um four by fours on top to make sort of like you know a fr like a wall frame but really spaced apart uh yeah so that that is what we are attempting to do We've had the, some of the wood arrive for the um, patio project back here, and we're going to be getting started today clearing the brush pile and all of the plants over here that aren't milkweed. I'm going to save the milkweed for, uh, so I can collect their seed pods later when they are ripe. Ready? What word would you say when you're trying to collect seeds? Ripe doesn't sound right. I don't know. You know what I'm saying. Did 
Jesse's clearing the lower branches off of that pine tree so that we can have a clearer path between the two levels of the back garden. All right, we got a lot done today. The brush pile is clear. We also knocked over a bunch of tools, but ignore that, please. We still have to dig up the stones around the fire pit. And I need to do a little bit more raking of all of the sticks and things around this area so that we can mow, uh, hopefully within the next day or so after we get the fire pit ring pulled out of the ground. And over here, branches are clear. Wave! <laughs> Thank you for doing the branches. <laughs> okay, well, a couple of days of work, um, well, a couple of half days of work anyway. Uh, we've got the, the rocks from the fire pit are pulled out and piled over there. Jesse has ridden the mower all around on the lowest setting to try and clear as much as possible around um, the sandy circle. The peninsula, or rather island of milkweed is still standing. And we are just about ready to start building the bottom frame. Good morning. Today is Thursday, July, I think the 22nd. I forgot to check the calendar, but if my reckoning is right, it is the 22nd. It is, it is downright delightful out here. When we were doing the clear out uh, a few days ago, it was it wasn't that hot, but it was disgustingly humid and it was so uncomfortable to be outside. And today it is absolutely beautiful. The sun is shining, the birds were chirping, but now they've quieted down. And uh, today's project is to take, sorry, the sun just got in my eye, take this lumber and turn it into the lower frame of the patio project. Today is going to be assembling the lower frame, uh, which is a bunch of two by sixes that we're going to connect with some mending plates and corner brackets and then uh, stake into place so that it doesn't shift around when it's time to put the gravel in. And the next phase of the project will be um, drilling the, um, the holes and setting the posts. But today, lower frame. Behold. Our slightly wonky square. We, this is, oh yeah, this is uh, the second day, by the way, of working on this project. It is now Friday. Um, we attached the 12 foot boards with some mending plates and they are staked in the ground and it is mostly square and mostly level. When you walk around it, it's visually, it seems like it's a lot wonkier than it actually is. But when we put the level on, there's it only dips and raises a tiny bit. Um, now this frame is just to hold the gravel in place. This whole middle bit is going to be filled with gravel and probably some sand to level out the middle, but mostly gravel. And yes, I was stubborn and decided we needed to keep the milkweed until I could harvest the pods. And so we had to put the board straight through, <laughs> straight through the stand of milkweed. And it's completely ridiculous because in front of it, it made it um, too far forward. And in back of it, it made it too far back. And uh, yeah, I know it's probably ridiculous, but that's the choice we made. Today's task. Ooh, the cicadas just started. Today's task is to, um, where that tent stake is right there, that's marking the center of where um, one of the posts is gonna go. So we need to dig out six holes that are 12 inches in diameter and two and a half feet deep because we're using um, 10 foot tall posts and they need to be buried in the ground two and a half feet. So that's today's task, all of the digging. Okay, now you, now you can look at me instead of at the ground. So today's task is digging the six holes for the posts and uh, we're gonna get some thunderstorms this evening, this afternoon. So we have to get all of them dug before three o'clock uh, because um, 
well, I don't want to be digging in the rain. Um, but that means we're, we're not setting any cement today. We're going to do that tomorrow because there's no rain in the forecast for tomorrow. So we're going to set the posts with the cement tomorrow afternoon. Phew! Not going to lie, I'm feeling a bit rough. Yesterday was a lot. Today is Saturday and we managed to dig four out of the six necessary holes for the posts. And today we are going to attempt to use quick setting concrete for the first time and to set some posts and the hope that they're all going to be in alignment <laughs> so that we can put the top rails on. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Okay, I should say that we are going to do the four corners and put posts in and then we are going to use the placement of those posts to tell us where to dig the um, middle poles because we didn't want to dig the middle pole and then the, the middle hole and then it's easier to put two poles in a straight line and then do the middle one than it is to you know what I'm saying okay re-watching all of that um, and then ending with you know what I'm talking about yeah no that was clear as mud so I'm gonna try to explain what I was trying to explain um, a month ago when I recorded that bit. So instead of placing uh, one here and then one here and then trying to do the third one in a line there, if the first one and the second one are at all a little bit off, let's say here, uh, then we try to put a board that's like that on top and then the other one in a line is going to end up way out there. So to avoid uh, going awry that badly, um, we're going to do the first one here, the second one here, and then in the middle we will be able to use this one and that one to figure out how to align the middle one. And I hope that made more sense. Anyway, so we're going to do the we're going to set the four corner posts and then we are going to if we have if we're feeling up to it today, we are going to dig the last two holes and then set those maybe today but possibly probably another day because digging digging holes is a lot of work um, one of us me was using the a really heavy metal bar to stab into the ground to move rocks and things out of the way and then Jesse was using the manual post hole or uh, we were calling them ground tongs <laughs> so I was stabbing and he was grabbing and that's how we d dug the holes and uh, it was a lot of work and I don't think we're gonna have it in us to do the last two today. Slight change of plans. We're going back to my um, version one vision for this project which is four freestanding posts with no spans across the way um, because <laughs> so either, either uh, we don't know how to use a level correctly or our bubble level failed us completely because when we brought in a laser level um, to, we knew we needed a laser level because we needed to figure out it, how we can put the posts so that the top of them is all level because we were putting a cross beam on top. Um, and so we needed to figure out how to make them level. So we got a laser level and the laser level informed us that <laughs> Our our wonky square is far wonkier than we uh, thought it was. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go back to my original plan of having four freestanding posts to sort of give the the feeling of a, of a room space rather than actually having anything with a span on it. We wanted the span so that we could hang our um, hanging hammock chairs from from a top beam, but we're just going to get freestanding hammock chair stands instead. <laughs> the good news is that we don't have to do any more digging of holes, which is very exciting for me. Um, I was slightly disappointed that we weren't going to be able to realize uh, our version 2 vision um, to have the uh, three poles on each side 
because we needed the center pole to, to hold the span. And so I was a little disappointed that we weren't going to be able to do that. But having going back to my original vision of having four freestanding poles makes this project much more closely um, achievable <laughs> for our level of skills. Good morning. Uh, it is Sunday, the 25th of July, and uh, again, feeling a bit rough, <laughs> probably looking a bit glistening. We just moved a bunch of um, the extra lumber that we ended up not using up to the big shared garage up front. Um, so, and I'm covered in mosquitoes. Please don't, please don't bite me. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. But not too nice. Don't take my blood. Right, distracted. Okay, so um, we have, uh, we just tidied up. I'm about to sneeze. Hang on. So yesterday we finished uh, putting up the posts and this morning we have tidied up all of the uh, extra lumber and we have properly put away all of our tools and we are ready to, for the next, we're ready for the next phase, which is uh, ordering a very large load of gravel to fill the bottom frame. And hopefully we can level that out enough to where uh, we can get a picnic table and things on here and not have it be slanted. So hopefully we can use a level correctly in that instance. But let me show you uh, what it looks like. Okay. I tried walking far enough back so you could see it. We still need to put that table away over there. Um, so it is approximately a 24 foot square. And the posts are, I think, ah, mosquito, sorry. And the posts are probably eight feet above ground in theory. We dug down, well, we dug down uh, two feet and a bit, so it's probably seven feet and a bit above ground, actually. Our plan is to put uh, hooks around each side of the post so that we can have um, hanging baskets of flowers and things, and then string um, bunting and fairy lights in between in between the posts on party days, at least in between the posts that are on the side, because this back area, right in the middle, we are going to be building a three-sided, um, it's not an oven, it's not an outdoor oven, it's just a three-sided cooking area. Um, we went camping five years ago, and uh, I will insert a picture here of what that um, contraption looked like. And we liked it so much that um, we decided to build one. So that's going to go here in the middle, offset, um, set back a little bit from the um, from the wooden frame. Um, so that's where we will have a little outdoor cooking area um, if we wanted to cook outside or just sit by a fire. There's the milkweed that's waiting to be harvested when the pods are ready. Yeah. So let me show you our uh, our good work on the posts. <laughs> We dug a hole and we poured it with cement and it is nearly square and nearly plumb. It's, it's probably level. Okay, I sort of trailed off there at the end <laughs> uh, because of exhaustion. So it is now um, a month later and I'm able to reflect on this. What I was trying to say at the end with my little walk around was that I'm really, really happy with how we were able to set the posts. And even if our uh, square is wonky and we had to change plans completely because we were not confident in our ability to make six posts or three posts level with one another um, in a row, you know, despite our having to change plans, I'm really, really happy with the space and I am looking forward to the next phase of the project. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll join me for part two, where we start uh, filling in the, the gravel and building the um, outdoor fireplace. And, uh, and hopefully we'll have a picnic table by then too. I hope to be able to um, paint a picnic table and have that included in part two as well. But that may or, 
may not be part of part two. Decor might be in a part three video. We shall see. So the reason we're calling it the pool house is because before we moved in, there used to be a pool on the site, an above, an above ground swimming pool. There was a circle of sand on the ground, and when we moved in, the pool was long gone, but there was still the circle of sand on the ground. And so we, when we first got here, we set up a ring of stones and had a fire pit in the middle of it, as you will have seen uh, in the clear out portion of, of this video today. We used that fire pit for years on and off, um, and the last few years we had let it get overgrown and we weren't using it as much. Um, so because it was the site of a former pool and we wanted this outdoor space to feel like an outdoor extension of our own house, we started calling it the pool house. We just thought it was hilarious that it's neither it neither has a pool nor is it a house, but we're calling it the pool house anyway. So thank you for joining me today and come back soon for part two. Bye for now. Thank you.